If you had asked me before the season who I thought the best team in the National League was going to be, I think I probably would have gave you a team from the National League West. You know, the San Diego Padres, maybe the Los Angeles Dodgers, but I don't think I would have said the San Francisco Giants. But here we are at the end of April, and the Giants, as of the date of this video, are 16-9, and good for a tie for the best record in the NL. They've hit pretty well with guys like Buster Posey and Evan Longoria, but the main story has been their pitching, and today we're going to talk about their starting rotation and everything they've done to make it work on a budget. The Giants didn't have a ton of homegrown talent headed into the season, especially in the starting pitching department, and they didn't have a lot of money to spend, yet they've put together a group of six or seven guys, all of whom are being effective on the mound. One by one, we're going to pick these guys apart and explain what they're doing right and how much the Giants paid to get them. Because for most of them, it's not a lot. Here's how the San Francisco Giants bought the best rotation in MLB. Before we talk about any of these guys individually, we need to understand what they're doing as a group and why it's so special. This rotation is just one of two in Major League history to have five starters all with a sub 2.5 ERA in the month of April, minimum three starts, the other being the 1978 Oakland A's. If we're going to start anywhere, we should probably start with the supposed ace of the Giants, Kevin Gausman. Many people, like myself, were shocked when the Giants extended a qualifying offer worth $18.9 million to Kevin Gausman very early in last year's offseason. Many called it an overpay, and uncharacteristic of the Giants considering the supposed direction they were heading in. Those people are very quiet now. After Gausman floundered for a couple years bouncing between the Orioles, Braves, and Reds between 2018 and 2019, he really found his footing as a Giant in the 2020 season and seems to only be improving in the new year. He's gone at least six innings in all of his starts, allowing one run or less in four of the five. It hasn't been easy opponents either, matching up with the Mariners, Padres, Reds, and Phillies along the way. Gosman's success is especially impressive because he's basically a two-pitch pitcher this year. He throws his four-seamer over 50% of the time and his splitter at 35%, while throwing his slider and changeup just a combined 11% of the time. Conversely, batters are four for eight against the slider and changeup, so this change may be for the better. His strikeout percentage is actually down 6% from last year, but this also may be for the best, as it's been replaced by a lot of soft contact. His 20.9 soft contact percentage is 13th in MLB, right behind Corbin Burns, who I'm sure you've heard me discuss before. A qualifying offer isn't exactly a cheap pay these days, but Galsman's making it worth every penny with his 2.14 ERA through 5 starts in April, and he doesn't look like he's slowing down anytime soon. Galsman is on pace to set loads of career highs in the 2021 season, and in the early goings, he's top 10 in the National league for ERA, whip, batting average against, and soft contact percentage. These are for qualified starters, minimum 30 innings pitched. But let's talk about a guy who's had more success that the Giants paid way less for. I always thought the Reds would eventually unlock Anthony DiSclefani's potential one day, but after a rough 2020 where he pitched to a 7.22 ERA in 7 starts, they finally pulled the plug and let him enter free agency. It's looking like a big mistake though, as the Giants scooped him up on a one-year deal worth just $6 million and turned him into one of the league's most effective pitchers so far. A key difference in DiSclefani's performance so far has been the difference in his launch angle. This year it's at 5.6 degrees, which means he's getting a decent bit of ground ball outs. His next lowest single season launch angle is 11 degrees from last year, nearly double what it is now. So even though opponents are hitting him hard at 91.5 average exit velocity, those hits are usually going straight into the ground. His 54.9 ground ball percentage is sixth in MLB, and it's his most efficient way of getting outs. This also has to do with the fact that DiSclefani is balancing his pitch repertoire more than ever before. His primary pitches in his four seam fastball and slider are both down over 5% from last year, and his sinker and change usage have gone up by 4%. His four-seamer has lost a tick on velocity and is getting hit at a 333 clip, so Disco has to be more conservative of where he uses it. The uptick in usage of his sinker and curve has worked out well, as opponents are just 5 for 50 against those pitches. His curve has especially turned heads because his whiff percentage on curveballs has doubled from 15.4 to 33.3 from 2020 to the current season. Even just five starts into the season, his sinker has already registered a career-best negative four run value. Among qualified starts, in the National League, he currently places in the top five for left on base percentage and ERA, as well as top 10 for hard hit percentage. Let's see who else is filling out this Giants rotation. 
Johnny Cueto is currently on the injured list and is expected to miss two starts with a latch strain, joining eight Giants already dinged up for the club this year. However, he made his mark known through his first three starts of the year, pitching to a 1.80 ERA over 20 innings. Cueto seems to shift his pitch repertoire every year, and it's hard not to when you're still kicking it in the league at age 35. The big difference in 2021 has been the jacked up usage of his slider, leaping from 9.9% in 2020, all the way up to 26.8% this year. This is the starkest pitch increase that we've discussed in the video so far. He's also been attacking the zone less, dropping 5% on his in-zone percentage, but this, among other things, has resulted in a 5.6% increase on his whiff percentage. The hope for Cueto is that the Giants can keep him healthy for a long amount of time. Johnny Cueto got the full 12 start slate in last year's shortened season, but he hasn't had over 13 games started in a season since way back in 2017, his second year as a San Francisco Giant. Cueto is coming up on the last season of the seven-year Albatross contract, where he gets paid over $20 million dollars annually, so this could be the last time we see him as a San Francisco Giant. In the early goings of the season, he places in the top 10 for ERA and WHIP for National League pitchers with a minimum of 20 innings pitched. Next up is perhaps the most unlikely entry on this entire list. Aaron Sanchez is someone I nearly had forgotten about since his all-star 2016 season, where he placed seventh in Cy Young voting with the Toronto Blue Jays. That certainly looked like it was going to be the peak of his career, as he bounced around from Toronto to Houston in 2019 and didn't even find a home for the 2020 season. He was unexpectedly picked up by the Giants for the 2021 season on a one-year, $4 million deal. It's looking like another absolute steal for San Francisco. Sanchez has pitched to a 2 0.22 ERA over five starts, the best start he's had to a season in his career since 2016. Aaron Sanchez is pounding the zone with his four-seamer more than ever this year, and while the peripherals on Savant don't exactly favor Sanchez because he doesn't strike out a lot of guys, if he continues to have good defense behind him, he may be in for a surprise year. I think his issue is trying to paint the corners and use his secondary pitches too much when his fastball works just fine if the defense is good enough behind him. Because he's attacking hitters this year, he's yielding a lot of contact, and his 22.2 soft contact percentage is 15th in the MLB, second on the team only to Logan Webb, who sits at 24.6%. He's another guy we'll be talking about later. His soft contact rating goes all the way up to 6th when it's just National League pitchers, and his rankings for hard hit percentage, ERA, and left on base percentage certainly deserve to be recognized as well. Many assume Sanchez would be a swingman or long reliever for the Giants, but he's surprising everyone by filling out the end of their rotation very well. Speaking of guys that have been relievers in the past, Alex Wood is another guy that signed for a pretty small contract at one year, $3 million. I had also thought he was going to be a lefty reliever for them, but he's been in the rotation and he's been killing it. Wood was once a very accomplished starter. He was an all-star in 2017, winning 16 games to the tune of a 2.72 ERA for the Dodgers, but he didn't start many games last year for the Dodgers on their World Series run. He's won all three of his starts this year with a 1.50 ERA in 18 innings, and he'll be getting more looks in the Giants rotation as he provides quality depth for them, especially with the Cueto injury that I mentioned before. Also putting together quality starts for the Giants has been Logan Webb, a homegrown talent of theirs. He's pitched to a 4.03 ERA in four starts and has made one relief appearance, so he looks to be the anchor of the rotation bouncing between long man and back end starter. The point of all this is to say that even though the Giants didn't spend the most money this offseason on free agents, I definitely think they spent their money the wisest of any team, as they've built one of the deepest pitching staffs in the entire league of baseball. It's really highlighted by their rotation ranking so far in the season. They're first in left on base percentage, first in ERA, and top five in whip, hard hit percentage, soft contact percentage, and batting average against. But we can't gloss over their bullpen too. Jake McGee is someone I discussed in my One Pitch Wonders video. You should go check that out. Because of the crazy amount of usage on his four-seamer from 2020, he used his fastball 96.4% of the time and still yielded effective results even when batters basically knew what he was throwing every time. In his new role with the Giants as their closer, he's kept the formula the same and has gotten the same success. He's currently second in MLB in saves with seven, trailing only Mark Melanson of the Padres. Right behind him is another homegrown product in Tyler Rogers. He's in his third year in San Francisco and he's having his best season yet, having pitched the most games of any reliever in MLB so far this year. He's only allowed a pair of runs over 15 innings of work, and his abnormal release point of his throw definitely keeps hitters off balance, especially considering the rising effect of his pitches, and how that makes him one of the most unique relievers in all of baseball. While the rest of the bullpen has some work to do in catching up to these two, if they can hold down the 8th and ninth innings for the Giants, I fully believe their rotation can get it to them pretty much every day with the amount of strong guys they got going right now. If guys like Matt Whistler and Harlan Garcia can step up their games and add to this bullpen, then the Giants might just have the best pitching staff in the National
the league. And we're saying that when they're in the same division as the Dodgers and the Padres. I wanted to end today's video by showing you guys how the Giants have put together a very effective rotation without burning their wallet completely. With just $10 million spent between Di Sclafani and Wood and then the qualifying offer to Gausman, the front of the Giants rotation has put together the same value as the front of the Yankees rotation for 20 million less dollars. Now granted it's a little exaggerated because of Garrett Cole's 36 million dollar annual value, but still I thought this graphic would be good in showing you how the Giants have been smart about the way that they spend their money. So yeah, that'll about do it for my analysis on the Giants. I do think they could probably keep this going at least until the All-Star break, and they definitely have the depth to do so. I definitely think a lot of it has to do with Buster Posey and Kurt Casale calling behind the plate. Posey brings that veteran presence back to the Giants clubhouse, and Casale has always been known as a really good defensive catcher. And they have that advantage over pretty much every other National League team. They'll have a tough schedule just like anybody in the NL West when you have to play the Dodgers and Padres and the guys in the AL West, but this Giants roster is just sneaky good. Don't be be surprised if the Giants are still above 500 at the All-Star break. Whether or not they're buyers or sellers remains to be seen, but the summer's going to be an interesting time in San Francisco. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.